Hi, I'm Scott Hunter, Director of Program Management for .NET. In this session, you're going to see some of the awesome new things we've been working on for .NET 6. So you can build cutting edge applications that target any operating system with the best of performance and productivity. .NET is a modern open source development platform for building many types of applications for many operating systems and devices. With .NET 6, you can use multiple languages, editors, and libraries to build for web, mobile, desktop, gaming, IoT, and a whole lot more. .NET makes you more productive building feature-rich applications for any type, for any device, with great performance. Today, I'm going to show you how you can build apps for the future with .NET. But first, I'd like to highlight some of the big accomplishments we've made with the community. The .NET ecosystem has seen some significant growth in the last few years. There are now over 5 million monthly active developers in the Visual Studio family of tools. .NET Core has ranked number one two years in a row as the most loved framework on the Stack Overflow Developer Survey. Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF, tracks the highest velocity projects on all GitHub. They measure this by the rate pull of requests and issues come in and how many are accepted. The .NET repos have been consistently in the top 30 since 2016 and is currently listed as the number one most active org. c -sharp is the top five language on GitHub, an indicator of a healthy open source ecosystem. And .NET contributors are extremely proud of their work on performance. ASP.NET Core ranks at the top of the industry Tech Empower benchmarks, an independent open source set of web performance benchmarks that measure dozens of languages and application frameworks. All of this is possible because of open source collaboration. Here you can see the Tech Empower performance comparison with Java and Node.js. Better performance leads to lower compute costs and .NET gets better every release. .NET 5's web framework, ASP.NET Core, is over 10 times faster than Node.js. In the gRPC server, performance is faster than Go, C++, and Java. I mentioned over 5 million monthly active .NET developers all up in Visual Studio, but we're also continuing to see some great adoption of our latest releases of .NET. In the first six months of release, .NET Core 3.1 had 3 million downloads, and it was the fastest adopted version of .NET at the time. I can now say that in the first six months of release of .NET 5, has 3.6 million downloads and is the fastest adopted version of .NET yet. We hear from a lot of customers that they are moving to .NET 5 because of the value and performance it brings over any other version to date. So why .NET 5? Applications built with .NET 5 can be deployed side by side on Windows, Mac, or Linux, with or without containers, allowing you the ultimate de deployment flexibility. We continue to make significant performance improvements up and down the stack so that native client apps and cloud web apps perform excellent. You can also reduce infrastructure costs and hosting costs, particularly on Linux. .NET and beyond is where we are making investments in the platform in the open with the help of the community. This includes modern, innovative languages and APIs, which make it the logical choice for any .NET application going forward. To help you, we're building the .NET Upgrade Assistant. It helps you modernize older .NET framework code bases it's a command line tool that gives you step-by-step -step instructions for upgrading to the latest versions of .NET. It will analyze NuGet packages and understand where your dependencies are. It gives you recommendations and fixes for project files, configuration, and source code to help you incrementally upgrade at your own pace. Multiple project types are supported, including ASP.NET, MVC web apps, Windows Forms, WPF desktop apps, and console apps and libraries. And additional types, like ASP.NET Web Forms, are coming later. The .NET Upgrade Assistant is in preview, and it's open source and accepting contributions. We're targeting release for .NET 6 in November, but we're seeing customers use it very successfully today, and I encourage you to give it a try. Now let's talk about where we're headed. Our vision for One.NET is to simplify the platform and choices for .NET developers and provide a single stack that supports the best breed solutions for all modern workloads. In .NET 6, We'll finish the unification of .NET by bringing in the AOT workloads that are supported by the Mono Runtime to bring one unified SDK, base class libraries, and tool chain. We'll provide a native cross-platform framework for building apps for iOS, Android, macOS, and Windows with a single code base as an evolution of Xamarin. We will also continue investing in the cross-platform web UI stack by expanding on the capabilities of Blazor. We're also making it much simpler to build cloud-native apps, and we'll continue investing in performance, not only at runtime, 
but also at build time, so you can build and debug any app quickly and iteratively. Here are some of the big areas of investment in .NET 6. I'm going to demo some of these in a minute, but I want to call out that there are a lot of improvements that we're making with the open source community up and down the stack. C Sharp 10 is the next version of the language that will release with .NET 6. Going forward, releases of C Sharp will align with the releases of .NET. C Sharp 10 has a strong focus on simplification. Features like global usings, file scope namespaces, remove much of the boilerplate code that you must write today. There are also a lot of small productivity features that are all about improving the clarity and simplicity of your code. .NET 6 will enable you to build cross-platform native mobile and desktop applications with a single code base with .NET Multi-Platform App UI or .NET MAUI. Blazor is expanding to support native device capabilities, particularly important for desktop scenarios. We're making it faster to build web APIs with minimal code, perfect for applications built for the cloud. .NET 6 will support more device targets and single file deployments for Windows with up to 50% smaller size. We have the productivity enhancements like hot reload for all project types and, of course, more performance improvements in the runtime. In .NET 6, one of the areas we're focused on for better performance was Entity Framework Core. We aspire to be one of the best performing data access layers. Dapper, for example, a lightweight .NET micro ORM, gave us lots of inspiration for this performance effort. I'm super happy to report that EF Core performance is now 70% better on the Tech & Power Fortunes benchmark and the memory allocations have been reduced significantly up to 43%. A lot of this is due to performance work in the .NET 6 runtime, but EF Core 6 itself is also 31% faster in query performance. These tests were done in-house on the same hardware as Tech Empower. Similar results should be reflected on the next round of Tech Empower benchmarks for the Fortunes test, which includes database access. Now let's talk about what we're doing to make it faster for you to build for the cloud. .NET 6, we're building upon C-sharp top-level programs to provide you with a lightweight way to build ASP.NET Web APIs with minimal code. No usings, no class definitions needed. This is an easy way to build APIs that can immediately take advantage of cloud scale without all the ceremony and boilerplate code of traditional controller-style Web APIs. And when your project starts to get too big, we'll provide tooling to automatically convert these to ASP.NET MVC controllers. It's just another option for quickly building APIs that don't need all the bells and whistles of controllers and startup classes. And they'll be part of .NET 6. Let's jump into a demo. I am super excited to show you ASP.NET Minimal APIs. We first introduced Web APIs in .NET back in 2012 with the Web API project, built on top of MVC, which uses controllers, routing, attributes, conventions, dependency injection, and more to let you build enterprise class APIs on .NET. And we've carried all that technology forward to .NET 6. But we see a new trend around lightweight APIs and small microservices. And some new frameworks like Express and Node, Lumen and PHP, Fast API and Python make these super easy to build minimal APIs. We want to enable you to build the same lightweight APIs using the same ASP.NET that you know and trust with less configuration and a path to upgrade to controller APIs if needed. To do this, we're using a bunch of new technologies. Look at this application. Using top-level programs, there is no class or main. It's just code. Using a Lambda, I can write the function in line next to my route. And if I run this, you can see that my three-line application can return hello world to the browser. We think these new lightweight APIs are going to make it easier for you to build microservices. We think it's going to be, be, make it easier for new people to learn and build their first APIs in .NET. So I'm super excited about this. But I want to take this to the next level and show you a real API. So let me go back to Visual Studio. Here we are back in Visual Studio. And in this case, I've got three API projects. My minimal web, web API project hosted in Azure uh, that powers the rest of the demos you'll see today. I've got my MVC web API project here as well. And I've got an Express application written in Node. Let's start off with the MVC web API. And you're going to see it's got a bunch of files, startup.cs, program.cs, and it's got its weathercontroller.cs. Let's dive into the weather controller. And you're going to see these APIs are based on classes that then have uh, methods with attributes on them. Great for building lots of APIs. But if I just want to build one API, I can go look at something like the Express application here. And look, it's very concise, down to 37 lines of code. 
uh, to build a single API. It gets right to the point. Now, if we move over to the new ASP.NET minimal API, you're going to see it's even smaller and more concise than the Express application. 30 lines of code. And this is because we're using new features like top-level programs, global using, and lambdas to really reduce the amount of ceremony you have to do to write a single API. This kind of technology is great for building microservices and simple APIs. Now, as I looked at this, I, uh, I wanted to compare all the technologies to each other. And so what I've got down here is I've got a notepad file, and I've kind of kept a tally of how much code you have to write. So the MVC Web APIs, uh, that's really if you want to build a lot of APIs. Uh, that requires about 138 lines of code to get started. The Node Express API uses 37 lines of code. And amazingly enough, you know, .NET uh, minimal APIs are only 30 lines of code. And this is just showing you we're applying these new technologies to make it faster and easier for you to build great apps. So here we are back in Visual Studio. And now what I want to do is run my app locally to make sure it works. Here we go. And you can see it's pulling the weather back. And so I've got a successful API using ASP.NET minimal APIs running. Now, the next thing I want to do is switch back to Visual Studio. And what I want to do is I want to publish this application to Azure for the rest of the demos that you see today. So I'm going to click Publish. We'll select Azure. And we'll select App Service Linux. Go. Let me create a new one. I'm going to change my name just to Minimal Weather. Um, I've got a uh, hosting plan already set up for me. I will select that. Press Create here. There we go. It's creating my app service. Now I'm going to click Next, and I'm actually going to deploy using GitHub Actions using CI/CD, and click Finish. What happens now is when I commit my app, it will do a CI/CD flow to publish it. I can switch to my repo, and you can see all the steps have happened to publish my app to Azure. And now I can actually go and open my browser tab here. And this shows the minimal API that we built running in Azure. And we will use this for the rest of the demos today. We've been shipping the first previews of .NET multi-platform app UI that we announced a year ago at Build 2020. .NET MAUI is the evolution of Xamarin Forms, designed to help you deliver high performance, cross-platform, native desktop and mobile apps, all from a single code base. In Preview 4 that released today, you can now use Visual Studio to build .NET MAUI apps. .NET MAUI under the hood uses technologies out there today for building native apps on Windows with WinUI, Mac Catalyst for Mac OS, and of course, iOS and Android. .NET MAUI abstracts all those frameworks into a single framework built on .NET 6. .NET MAUI on Windows will support WinUI and Project Reunion allowing these apps to use all the newest native features on supported versions of Windows 10. That means you can build all these apps for any device from a single code base and project system. Instead of learning different stacks and languages for each, you can now just use one language, one set of libraries, and one UI stack for all of them. And that includes desktop and mobile operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. It will release as part of .NET 6 in November, you can watch the progress and help contribute on GitHub in the .NET MAUI repo. Let me show you a demo of .NET MAUI in action. .NET 6 brings consistent experiences from all project types to .NET MAUI, including the command line. In this case, we're going to create a new MAUI app with .NET New MAUI. Uh, we're going to name it Build MAUI. Now, from here, I could run if I wanted to uh, .NET Restore, .NET Build, .NET Run. Uh, but I want to show you how we can build an optimized experience for building cross-platform applications with Visual Studio. So let me launch Visual Studio here. .NET MAUI targets iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. And so what we're going to do here is take the single project here. We're going to set this to startup project here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go to the uh, debug menu here. And let me click that again, drop that down. And I'm select the framework that I want to run on. And I'm going to select Android here. And that means when I run the application, it's going to actually run the application on my Android emulator on the right here. So let's get this started. Um, one of our goals with .NET MAUI was to give you a single project for building all your applications. So you can focus more on your application and less on the specific targets uh, of your application. It all starts with the startup.cs file. 
This is very similar to what we do with ASP.NET today. This is where you configure all of the things for your application. In this case, we've set on, we want Xamarin Forms compatibility. We set our default application. We're gonna set our font right here. Um, and if I'm using third-party libraries, I would configure them here as well. Maybe I'm gonna use dependency injection. I wanna share something across my application. I would put that here as well. And so that's kind of the way we have copied that experience from ASP.NET to over here. Now we all have these folders, Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, and we have the WinUI 3 uh, down here. And this is where you write your platform specific code. We also have a resource folder. Inside of that, we can put your fonts, your images, your app icon, your startup screen, all in one place. And so here the application is booting up in my emulator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and click the counter here and see it's at number five. And I'm gonna show you a hot reload. I can actually change either my XAML or my C Sharp and press save. And as soon as I do, the application updates immediately. This helps with your productivity quite a bit. Now this is a semi-simple application. Let's use a more complex example and show you how we can do platform specific light up with .NET MAUI. So here I am in Visual Studio with my weather application. And you're gonna see in that uh, as I run it here, it's a WinUI, native Windows application. Um, but I've done a few things differently here. If you look in my configure services, I've added some new services. I've added a tray icon for putting a tray icon on Windows. I've added notifications for native notifications and a tray icon for Mac. Now, if I go and show my main page here, you can see I've, what I've done is set up app actions. This allows me to put a context menu when you right click on the app icon where you can put some menu items in here and make it do some other options. I've also added a tray icon too. And so what happens here, if you click on the tree icon, we'll send a notification on the platform that you're on with that data. So if I look here, I can right click here, my new context menu showing up right here in my applications is showing native UI hookup. Here's my tree icon. I can click it and there you go. You can see as soon as I did that, a notification popped up in Windows. It's just showing how you can do these native light ups across all the platforms. Now, I can't just show you just Windows. .NET Melody is cross-platform. Let's go to my Mac and I'll show you a couple other options. Here you go. I've got my same UI and same code running on iOS, Mac OS, and Android. If I resize the Mac OS application, you see it resizes dynamically like you would expect. If I click the icon, you see those same menu items there that you saw before. And then if I click the icon at the very top, you'll get that notification directly on your Mac. So this is showing you how we could do this cross-platform light up but still give you these native options with .NET MAUI, all using the same UI. Blazor has become a very popular way to write .NET web apps. In fact, it's one of the fastest growing workloads in .NET today. We first supported Blazor on the server, then in the browser with WebAssembly. And now we're extending it again, so you can write Blazor desktop apps in .NET 6. This means you can create hybrid client apps which combine web, and native UI together in a single native client application. It's primarily targeted at web developers that want to provide a rich client and offline experience for their users. Blazor Hybrid Apps is built on top of .NET MAUI. It relies on the UI stack for a native application container and native controls should you want to use them. Blazor Desktop Apps have full access to the machine. You can do things like call native APIs, access the file system, write multi-threaded applications, all with the high performance and optimal memory consumption you get with .NET. You can't do this with pure web technologies. Although it will run anywhere, our primary focus for Blazor is on supporting rich desktop scenarios on Windows and Mac. Let's see what we can do with Blazor desktop apps. Blazor makes it easy to build rich, modern web UI. Here's our weather app implemented as a web app using just HTML, CSS, and .NET. The web app has a nice responsive layout, so it looks good on mobile devices as well as desktop screens. We can see the current weather and local weather forecasts. We can also check out the weather from other locations. Here's the weather in South Korea. Here we can also change the settings of the app to switch from imperial units to metric units and it automatically gets applied to the entire application. Now all of the client-side interactivity in this app is implemented using reusable Blazor components that work in any modern web browser using just the open web. The app calls our Azure hosted minimal weather API to get all of its weather data. By pairing Blazor with an ASP.NET Core server, you can build full stack web apps with just .NET. Our weather app can still use some improvements. The list of weather stations on the right hand side looks a bit plain. 
In .NET 6, we can quickly make changes to our ASP.NET Core and Blazor apps using .NET Hot Reload. Here's the component that displays each weather station. As you can see right now, it's got some simple markup. Let's update the styles for this stack box class. Save that. It gets automatically applied. It looks nice now. Let's also add some markup here in order to better lay out the text and maybe add an icon. Save that. With .NET Hot Reload, our changes get applied to the running app without losing any app state. Blazor makes building web apps with .NET fast and fun, but sometimes you need more than what the web platform offers. By combining Blazor with .NET MAUI, you can reuse your existing web UI logic and web development skills to build cross-platform native apps that can take advantage of the underlying platform. .NET MAUI comes with a built-in Blazor web view control that you can use to add existing Blazor components to any .NET MAUI app. This means we can take our Blazor components from our weather app and embed them into the .NET MAUI app without having to change anything. Here is our weather app running on as a native desktop app on Windows. It looks the same and has exactly the same functionality using the same Blazor.NET code. Blazor components hosted in .NET MAUI run directly in the .NET process. This means they run fast and have full access to the native capabilities of the device through the .NET platform. For example, we can reuse the same system tray integration that you saw previously and trigger native platform notifications. Because this Blazor app is running inside a .NET MAUI app, it can run on other platforms too. Let's switch over to my Mac to see how Blazor desktop app can run cross-platform. All right, here is our Blazor weather app running as a native Mac app. As you can see, it's got the same look and feel. It's got the same functionality. If we check out the weather in South Korea, we can do that. There it is, and it looks and feels the same because it's the same code that we ran in the Windows app and also on the web. The app also has native integration, so it can show the little .NET bot up in the menu. We can click him and trigger a native notification. By building our app as a Blazor hybrid app with .NET MAUI, we get the best of .NET, the best of the web, and the best of the native platform. We're working on a bunch of productivity improvements everywhere that will help you build and debug your apps much quicker. We commonly refer to this as the inner loop. It includes build time performance improvements, in both the CLI as well as Visual Studio. You can see here that build times have significantly improved as compared to .NET 5. We're also working on bringing hot reload technology to all project types. That means you can make UI and code changes while running and your app will immediately refresh. No more death by a thousand F5s. No more start, stop, make a change, repeat. There's no process restart, state is maintained, and you can optionally attach the debugger. It's really the evolution of Edit and Continue. We're very committed to making .NET 6 the most productive development platform for you, no matter what type of app you are building. Let's dive deeper into how Hot Reload will improve your productivity. For this demo, I have two apps to show you. First, let's start with the WPF app running on the right-hand side. This is a .NET 6 app called Boyd's, a game of life simulator, and you can see many shapes moving around. With .NET Hot Reload, we can now change the game logic while the app is running. To do that, we're gonna press this brand new button. Now let's go ahead and make a change to the app and see how it works. I didn't build the app, so I'm not sure what changes to make, but let's go ahead and change speed limit. That seemed like it's gonna do something. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. How about we add 10 to it? Now I'm going to apply the change. And as you can see, the behavior of the game is changing right away. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to make a different change. I'm going to make a change to the percentage to move towards home. Not quite sure what that's going to do. Let me just add 0.1 to that. And again, I'm going to apply the changes. And now you see a dramatic change in the app without having to restart it. While it's fun to show you an app like this, I now want to go back to our weather app and show you some edits that should feel like real world situations. Let's switch over to our weather app.
Here's the weather app you've seen in the other demos. As you know, this is a .NET MAUI desktop application, and here too we can apply code changes while the app is running. So first I'm going to look at the wind indicator. I expected some simulation code to have been added to make the indicator move. Let's go, and see, go ahead and see what happened. I'm going to go look at the code and find there's a to-do here. Instead of stopping the application, I'm just going to go ahead and add the code that I would have expected to be here. I'm going to add a get direction, which gives me some random directions. I'm going to change it so it applies the direction icon, and I'm going to apply those changes. The indicator starts to move. For favorites, I'm going to go ahead and click that button. And it seems like something is missing here as well. So let's go look at the view model. Well, I have some properties here, but it seems like I have no logic to load the data. Let's make a change that's needed. Now I could have typed this, but just to save us some time, I'm going to paste the code in. It should have been here. And you can see we have a constructor, an async method, a private method. All of this can be applied to the running app by hitting the apply code changes. Switching back, I can go ahead and switch to the home screen, switch back to favorites, and now I see the data. But I see one last bug. It's only loading Redmond. Hmm. Let's go take a look. Ah, uh, yes, would be easy to miss. It should be an I instead of zero. I'm going to apply those code changes and navigate back and forth. There we go. And now we get all the data we expect. Now with this app, it easily could take 15 to 20 seconds to restart the application. And it's a small demo app. But with Hot Reload, we were able to make all these changes without having to restart the app a single time. Imagine how much time it will save you. .NET 6 Preview 4 is available today and previews drop every month until we release in November. I highly encourage you to download and check it out. I showed you .NET MAUI, Blazor desktop apps, and some of the work we're doing to make cloud native development much simpler. But there's also a ton of other great features coming. Download .NET 6 Preview 4 and try it out today. And finally, I'm excited to announce that .NET Conf 2021 will be November 9th through the 11th, where we will launch .NET 6. Like always, this three-day virtual event will go deep into all the things you can do with .NET. We'll have tons of sessions from the product teams at Microsoft, as well as the community. Keep an eye out for the call for content, opening soon, and learn more at .netconf.net. Save the date. I hope I got you excited about .NET 6 today. If you want to learn more, please visit our blog to read all about the preview for release. We also have a longer on-demand video for you with a lot more demos that you should watch. And please attend our Ask the Expert session Thank you for watching.